you. Well, uh, welcome to Rugby Borough Council's Scrutiny Committee this uh, Monday the 28th of March. I'm uh, Councillor Tony Gillis, the Vice Chairman of this Scrutiny Committee. Uh, the meeting is being web-streamed to the public through the Council's YouTube channel. During the meeting, if you wish to speak, please use the push to talk button on the microphone in front of you. Uh, this will allow the camera to pan in your general direction. Before we begin the formal agenda, I am obliged to read out the following fire notice. There is no fire drill scheduled in the building this evening. If the fire alarm sounds, then please could I ask that you make your way out of the building, down the main staircase, and out of the main doors of the town hall, and congregate at the entrance to Caldicott Park. An officer of the council will give instructions on when it is safe to return to the building. And moving on to the agenda, the first item of the business is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of March, 2022. And could I have a proposal, please? That that's the true record of the meeting. Councillor Dr. Mark Williams is uh, proposing. And a seconder, please. And Councillor Jerry Rood has a second. All in favour, please show. Thank you very much. Second item uh, on the agenda is to uh, apologies for absence. Chair, we have apologies for Councillor Eccleson. Okay, and have we got um, Councillor O'Rourke as well? Thank you. Right, declarations of interest. To receive um, interest of defined by the Council's Code of Conduct for members, any non-pecuniary interests? No. Any pecuniary interests? No. And uh, notice under Section 106, Lo Local Government Finance Act 1992, non-payment of community charge or council tax. And that is a no. So let's move on now to item number four, Community Safety Annual Report. The Chief Officer of Regulation and Safety is present and also the portfolio holder, Councillor Derek Poole, who will present. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> 1998, the Crime and Disorder Act requires responsible authorities to work together to reduce crime and disorder at a local level. In England, the responsible authorities are the police, the local authorities, fire and rescue, health and probation services. The responsible authorities must work together to protect their local communities from crime and help people to feel safer. The scrutiny committees have a statutory responsibility at least once a year to review the decisions and actions of the responsible authorities within the Rugby Community Safety Partnership in relation to their crime and disorder functions. <clears throat> the Rugby Community Safety Partnership. The Rugby Community Safety Partnership, the CSP, is well established with a good track record of understanding levels of risk within the borough. Also producing an action plan to deal with local community safety concerns and working across partners to maximum, maximize resources. Over the last 12 months, the Rugby CSP has seen considerable change, not at least due to the effects of the world, worldwide COVID-19 pandemic on crime and disorder. In addition, a corporate restructure of what was the senior management team, but now the leadership team, occurred in April 21, which resulted in a service restructure and approved by members in December. There's a typo there, Chairman, please. It, it read 2022, it should be December 21. The community safety function is now within the environmental health and community safety team, which brings together teams with similar and, uh, and improved resilience. The team is managed by Henry Biddington, the council community wardens who have a very good reputation with elected members providing frontline proactive and reactive services including out of hours and at weekends. It is a part of this team that Denise Lott, community safety and antisocial behaviour coordinator is also a key member of that team. 
Following a request from me, the Chair of Rugby Community Safety Partnership, a review of the role of the Board has been carried out by the Warwickshire County Council Community Safety Team, which aims to support the Board to be more inclusive, improve strategic planning, and more closely linked to the officer groups, including monitoring performance. Early outcomes of this are to a strategic move away from one year's target to setting priorities for four years, including leaders of the opposition parties in confidential board briefings, the officers reviewing the specific groups which feed into the board and the partnership. This has been reflected in a review of the priority, priority action group, PAG as we know it, which means between the CSP board meetings, primarily to consider actions arising from the CSP board and to receive analytical reports in time in, to inform future agenda items for the CSP board. The PAG has been very well attended by a broad range of partners and has been heavily involved in the production of strategic assessment and is currently heavily involved in the production of revised resulting action plans. Following the review of the PAG meeting, this has been mirrored in the monthly problem solving meeting, PSP, of which this operational meeting is implemented actions arising from the PAG and the CSP board. The Rugby CSP has also recognised the ever-growing importance of working with our country, countrywide neighbours and partnerships, both because of the cross-border nature of some crimes and in recognition of resourcing constraints of individual agencies. To this end, Chairman, the Rugby CSP has increased its engagement in the Countrywide Community Safety Officers Group. The Serious and Organised Crime Joint Action Group, the Warwickshire Prevent Steering Group, Warwickshire Hate Crime Partnership, the Northern Warwickshire Hate Incident Panel, the Warwickshire Reducing Reoffending Strategy, Domestic Abuse Emerging Trends Group, Violence Against Women and Girls, and the Overarching Arcing, um, Safety Warwickshire Partnership Board. In addition to local rugby-based partners, the CSP continues to forge strong links with countrywide partners, including the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner, Warwickshire County Council, Warwickshire Police, and numerous third sector organisations. Knife crime is a priority in the borough, and Warwickshire Police have been leading in tackling this crime supported by partners, including Rugby Borough Council and Warwickshire County Council. A campaign is currently being planned in schools. In addition, following an incident at a local college, a briefing was given to members, which is planned to be more regular, uh, a more regular event, including other areas of activity in the partnership. A violence against women and girls squad, an officer group used to start the process before engaging with stakeholders, including councillors, has been set up by this council and is chaired by Henry Biddington, Environment and Community Safety Manager. A survey was carried out by the council in May 21 of women and girls to get feedback on what was their priority should be. This showed that a significant, significant number of women and girls had suffered unwanted sexual attention, often things like passing comments from men walking or in vehicles, and showed a number of issues that had not been anticipated, e.g. Uh, women being followed in public areas like supermarkets, which showed the need for the local survey and also local plan. We are all supporting Warwickshire wide WCC County Group. The Rugby Borough Council has received funding from the government's Safer Streets 3 fund, which with the assistance of the Police and Crime Commissioner and Warwickshire County Council for works to reduce the risk, the risk to women and girls, which is being used for projects to improve CCTV and lighting on the Black Path and the Railway Bridge. These works should be completed within the next few weeks. It will also be linked to the Home Secretary's Enough campaign. We continue to work with Warwickshire Police and partners on preventing terrorism. 
which has also started on preparing a new duty regarding anti-terrorism protection of building spaces and public assessment, access, sorry. Strategic assessment, do you want me to carry on, Chair? I just wonder whether we can uh, just pause at that point there. Certainly. Thank you, thank you very much for the presentation so far. We're, we're blessed to have with us um, Sa Inspector Sally Bunyard Spears, who's um, I'm, I'm probably the fountain of all knowledge on this, sub on this subject. So um, whether you'd like to chip in at this point uh, and add, add anything to that. Chair, I won't at this stage. I'm mindful there's obviously going to be various things, um, issues that are raised. Um, and obviously going through this document, I can obviously answer those as and when um, councillors want to ask a question. But obviously the document that's been provided has a good overview of what we've been doing as a CSP and PAG. Thank you very much. Now, I'm sure we've got uh, councillors who want to ask some questions. I know what there's looking through the documentation myself. We've got a considerable um, issue with antisocial behaviour incidents and violence without injury and violence with injury. It's very, very disturbing and alarming. And um, I, I can see that you've got uh, this, this system called Loudmouth, where you've been making contact with uh, various schools in the rugby borough. And my first question is, are you going to extend that to include all schools in the borough of rugby? Um, in respect to the CSP and PAG, um, it's quite important in respect to all of the uh, priorities that we're targeting that we actually have an education programme in the background. Um, I'm mindful that Warwickshire County Council and Rugby Borough Council and Warwickshire Police are working in coordination together to put a programme in place. I'm mindful that if we're not careful, we end up doing some silo work, so there'll be a lot of projects going into each school, each establishment, so we need a more consistent approach. So there is work going on with Jonathan Toy with Warwickshire County Council. Obviously, Warwickshire Police through the SNT have got a programme going locally with PC Matt Birch, um, but we need to bring that together with Rugby Borough Council to make sure we've got a consistent programme in the schools, which is in running conjunction with the head teachers. Right, have we got questions? Councillor Tom Mahoney. Thank you, Chair. Um, one thing that's always bothered me about uh, modern policing, and, and obviously in my age I'm used to things being a bit different, is visibility of police. Um, I come from a military background, and, and one of the big things that we're taught is that visibility is a deterrent. I, you see the enemy about, you're going to modify your behaviour. It worked for us in Northern Ireland, and I think it probably works, you've got to admit, it works in, in a civilian environment as well. I live in the town centre, and it's very rare, unless you're actually dealing with a, an incident in the town centre, that I'll see anybody patrolling on foot. Um, we have a lot of issues in there, and I, th and I worry that we're relying too much on CCTV. And on the number of occasions that I've reported an incident, invariably the camera is pointing in the wrong direction and there's no record of what I've seen. Um, so two questions. Is there any plans to increase m foot patrols or even mobile patrols if need be in the town centre area? And realistically, how helpful is CCTV? Since we're spending an awful lot of money on it, um, I know you don't control it, but what sort of input or feedback do you get from the operators? And is it doing the job that you want it to do? Uh, we don't control it either. It's obviously it's controlled by rugby first. But um, that's, those are two main questions. A, plans for future as regards to patrolling. And two, is CCTV living up to your expectations? Thank you. So in respect to mobile patrols, I totally agree with you. High visibility patrol is really important. Um, as you can appreciate, um, not just through the pandemic, but obviously the restructuring of Warwickshire Police with the Alliance, we're obviously going through a major reconstruction or reconstruction of Warwickshire Police. At the moment, for Town Centre, I have one beat manager and three PCSOs, although one of those PCSOs has now gone to be a PCDA student, so they're becoming a police officer. So we are on the process of recruiting new PCSOs for the Town Centre. That won't be a quick fix, as you can appreciate at the moment, so that will happen. Um, I do know through the last 12 months it's been quite difficult for the team. Uh, there's been some personal issues going on in the team, so we haven't had that visibility that we'd like to have. 
but we should have that in the town. So I agree, mobile patrols are important. That's both on foot cycle and obviously with vehicles. It's more restricted with vehicles because of the nature of the town centre itself. Um, that might change if with the regeneration of the town centre in the future, but that's something to monitor. So I endeavour to have officers out there at high visibility, so that's a definite. In respect to the CCTV, we can't work without CCTV. I have to say, I appreciate what you say about not capturing every incident, and cameras can't be everywhere, but they work really well at Rugby Bid, and we have a really strong relationship with them. And actually, in coordination with the mobile patrols, the CCTV, and obviously the community reporting instance, I think that's more effective. You can't have one without the other. So in answer to your question, yes, mobile patrols, absolutely, more high visibility. Um, we need to do more work with the businesses to report. Obviously, they need to let us know when incidents are occurring at the time. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges for Warwickshire Police is that we don't get the reports coming in. We target areas where we see an increase in demand. And if there isn't the reports being reported to Warwickshire Police, we don't target those areas. So it's quite important that we get that message out to businesses and the community. But CCTV, absolutely. I know I work very closely with uh, Rugby Bid, um, and I wouldn't want to be without them. I'll just respond. Going back to the, just picked up on that thing about reporting. I've, like, like I said, I see quite a bit where I am, and I've attempted a couple of times to report things, and I've got to say, your website leaves a lot to be desired. It sends you around in circles. Um, in the end, I didn't end up reporting what I thought I saw, because it just kept given the answers that I was given, it was just sending me round and round and round. So that needs to be looked at. That, it, that will put people off. And I would like to believe access to a digital input, you know, on the computers, is a lot easier than trying to get somebody on the phone. And it, I think people are a bit more comfortable with it, but not if it doesn't work. Yeah, just to make you aware, obviously Warwickshire Police has just gone through a revamp of their uh, IT. Um, so obviously now we have a lot more access to video conferencing. Um, we've just moved to Stuart Ross House. So our command and control system has just moved to Stuart Ross House from Leek Wotton. So this is a state-of-the-art facility that we now have. Um, I appreciate at the moment, and I do get a lot of complaints about 101. Um, I also get complaints about online reporting. So we have two systems. We obviously have nine, well, three systems, 999, 101, and obviously online reporting. Um, we are out there constantly as a team trying to encourage the community to use those systems. But I have to say that obviously through the last 12 months, it's been quite a challenge for the organisation. But I do think come the autumn that we'll be in a much better, much stronger position in respect to our structure and IT. So yes, I take on board what you say. It does get reported back to the supervisors at the command and control and the hierarchy. Um, but we obviously endeavour to improve it all the time. Perhaps I can come in there, Chair, please. Uh, I can report your comments to the police and crime panel, which I sit on, uh, which reports back to the police through the chief constable. So it will be done twice for you. Before we, before we move on to the next speaker, I'll just make, a, a, make you aware of an incident that um, happened quite some years ago now, when I got uh, dumped in the, in the role of being chairman of the Pailton Parish Council. We didn't have a beat officer at all at that time. And uh, lo and behold, I had a knock on the door for our, by an ex-traffic cop, Mick Schofield, who said, how do you want me to police your village? And I said, I want you to wear your uniform, the one with the pointed hat, and I want you to march up and down this village so that people can see you. And believe it or not, the phone never didn't stop ringing because people then didn't have the fear of intimidation about you know, the rise of antisocial behaviour that's happening in the village at that time. So that the presence does work. I've got Councillor Lisa Parker. Thank you, Chair, and can I just thank the uh, portfolio holder for a really uh, very uh, detailed report and response, and it's really nice that we've had lots of detail to go through tonight, so I just want to put that on record to him and his officers. Um, obviously, my thoughts on lockdown are well documented, and uh, I wanted to talk tonight about the figures that aren't presented in this report, the hidden harms that occurred during lockdown that we saw in the national headlines resulting in horrific incidents of child brutality and uh, ultimately murder of young people who were imprisoned with their abusers. Obviously this is not one of the priorities um, for Rugby Crime and Disorder Partnership and I'm not seeking to make any particular point other than to say and to ask if 
there were concerns that that period of lockdown um, meant that vulnerable people of all ages went unprotected. Perhaps we can get some figures for you, Councillor Parker, from uh, Warwickshire Insight, um, who do a, a, a monthly review of all the figures. Um, perhaps um, Mr. Collin and Mr. Burroughs can help you out further. Um, I'll pass over to him. And are there any personal comments from either the Chief Inspector or that that resulted in? I mean, you know, the harms are well documented. It's, I don't think I'm... <laughs> I don't think I'm uh, suggesting anything that hasn't already been uh, thoroughly discussed. No, and I think you're <coughs> absolutely right. One of the fears that we had, and some of the statistics show, that obviously people stuck in a domestic environment increased their risk. That doesn't mean that the work that was carried out by ourselves and uh, Warwickshire County Council and Warwickshire Police didn't continue. Um, obviously, these are summary reports. Um, a lot of work was diverted into protecting vulnerable people during that time. Thank you. I do have another question, if I'm allowed to. Yeah, go or, ahead. Right. Yeah, can I ask um, uh, the representative from the police tonight uh, how often officers are being called to the Dunchurch Park Hotel, which is being housed uh, with 150 plus asylum seekers there, and what, if any issues have arisen? regarding um, community relations uh, on the housing of uh, those individuals. And if any, if we could have a breakdown of uh, the nationalities that we're dealing with, I understand it's upwards of 30 different nationalities um, at that location. And if that brings in and of itself any additional challenges for the community um, that are welcoming those uh, asylum seekers. Thank you. So in respect to uh, course of service for the police, um, we're not having that many. Um, we had a few in respect to the pods arriving at Dunchurch Park Hotel. Um, that was over a period of about week, two weeks. Um, that created some community tensions with some local residents, but that was managed through the police and Dunchurch Park Hotel. Um, in respect to community tensions, there's been very few issues in respect to that, so um, there's no immediate concern. Um, we do attend the hotel now. We've done one induction um, event with the uh, service users at the location. That's through Warwickshire County Council, Rugby Borough Council and Warwickshire Police. And that went down really well. Um, so we've got an opportunity to speak to the service users at length. Um, in respect to nationalities, it's a changing picture. I, I can't give you the exact um, nationalities that are there, but there are quite a few um, that we're dealing with. Um, but, uh, yeah, in respect to those, um, no major issues for me. Um, I think the major concern was the pods that were coming into the community. Thank you for that, that response. Thank you, Chair. Could we just clarify for those who don't understand what the pods are, what, what, that, what we're talking about? Because <laughs> yeah. they're not teenage pods, are they? No, they're, that we used to have. Um, they're basically accommodation. So they're small accommodation that are being provided by the um, hotel. Um, there is no planning permission at this moment in time for that. That's obviously being managed by Rugby Council with the hotel. Um, but the idea is that obviously more accommodation will become available to the Home Office and Serco. Thank you. Right, we've got two speakers next. We've got Councillor Noreen New, followed by Councillor Jerry Rudhouse. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd also like to place on record my thanks to portfolio holder for the report. It's very useful. Thank you. Um, I am concerned that one of the main concern, areas of concern is against the LGBT community and it says that there's going to be work on violence against women and girls I'd like to know a little bit more about what sort of work that might involve please especially with schools because we are having young people transitioning at a much younger age even in primary schools and I'd like to know what support is being given and um, information is being given to schools on how to deal with these issues thank you um, yes we carried out a survey obviously last year uh, to find out a little more about this this issue um, working with the police etc we're trying to work out really what communities are concerned about what their views are etc and provide services based around that and clearly last year was the time to look at violence against women and girls and the survey came back with quite a lot of surprising issues so Warwickshire County Council have got a violence against women and girls group but jointly we decided that actually the survey showed there was a lot of rugby-specific things going on. 
uh, places like the Black Path, the Railway Bridge, um, various concerns about things like supermarkets and, and women actually being followed in supermarkets, which um, I don't suppose we should be surprised about, sadly. But it's pointed us in the direction of an action plan. So what's happened is that we have set up a specific squad, which is the officer group, to look at all of those issues that have been raised and draw up an action plan. And in fact, the chair of that squad is, is Henry Biddington, who's here tonight. Um, the plan then is to go back to the community and say, have we got this right? Is this the things that you're concerned about? Are we looking at this in the right way? And one of the priorities, we've got six priorities at the moment for the partnership, is hate crime. And hate crime is a is constantly moving issue in rugby. Um, we are very concerned, uh, the police and ourselves, about under-reporting. Uh, we don't think it's being properly reported. And so we're trying to put a lot of work into that community trust type approach to actually get people feeling confident to do that so that we can actually get those figures to actually look to see what we can actually do. And that is going to be one of the, the key priorities. So yes, the LGBT plus community is one of those. Eastern Europeans were targeted at one point. Um, and there are a number of uh, religious groups that have been targeted as well. So we're trying to better understand that. Um, over the COVID period, some of the uh, groups that we've been supporting um, have actually reduced. And so we have been talking to Equip, um, who are the equality group, about uh, reinvigorating those groups and getting them uh, properly constituted again so that we can re-involve. And one of the things that uh, Inspector Bunyard Spears and ourselves have been doing is looking at the statistics to try and find those patterns. Where's it occurring? Who's responsible for it? Um, I'm not underestimating how much work is going on. And I'm very pleased to note that there is a television campaign now uh, specifically against violence against women and girls, encouraging better behaviour and the reporting of it. And I'm hoping that that will be part of a, a local initiative as well that will actually mean that people feel confident in telling us what they need us to do and that we can provide that. Thank you for that response there. We've got Councillor Jerry Roodhouse next. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, and thanks to Derek and for the report, the very full, frank report. Um, I'm looking at the insight element of it, which is the data table for crime and disorder, <coughs> and looking at some of those. And it does say um, underneath the, uh, in, in the commentary about the domestic violence, knife crime, and about the most concerning to Rugby Borough is that increase and the trend identifying um, those elements. Uh, as well and you sort of go back up and you look at the red the reds uh, across there so we have violence against women rape uh, domestic abuse knife crime and, and that's an interesting one because it's saying most of that home based potentially there's probably something about data there I don't know but that, that, there's that I found that a bit uh, interesting element and then the, there's a part which rings in the back of my mind as well because um, I uh, on child exploitation and I notice on there but I do know speaking at the county council and looking at the data there that there's an issue with children in care and missing episodes and then with county lines exploitation and those elements going on and of course that doesn't potentially reflect itself into this the bit for me that's missing across this is we like the police are picking up all the end game of what's happening in society basically it's all you know you, you get all the stuff that's come downstream from all, away from there. And the bit I don't see that I know that Early Help is doing stuff, Warwickshire Youth doing stuff, uh, On Track is doing stuff, yeah, NHS is doing stuff. Early, yeah, it goes, the list goes on. Um, and it, it does make me think of how much actual funding is going in, but actually what we don't see is actually results coming out at the end. And I suppose the question back to the safety partnership is, you know, is there a spreadsheet or a piece of paper you can put up there which shows me the amount of agencies, the funding going in to resolve some of these issues? Because it seems to me they've been going on for some time. 
in, in relation to that. And as I say, it, it comes through, and what the police have to do is then pick that up. By the way, Councillor Mahoney, I echo your comments about the website, it's awful. And my residents have been telling me that now. So please, can we get that sorted to do with the safer neighbourhood teams and, and the rest of it? Yeah, because they're quite used to doing that. So there is something at, around actually um, those elements of the strategic element of seeing everything bolting together and where the investment is going. And alongside that, I'd be interested to know exactly what our communication side at the Borough Council is doing in relation to a planned campaign, say, with public health, with early intervention and other elements to actually do some joined up with elected members and the rest of it. So there's a, even like, there's a movement of a campaign that's, that's taken forward with a particular uh, name or whatever else you, you, you want to do it. You know, but I say, yeah, well done to everything that's been done, and you can see that in the report. But, but to me, there just seems to be some consistent messaging coming out um, from there. And, and, you know, as I know, that I can see figures now starting to shift on self-harm for, for people in, 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 in the town. We, we were an outlier, one of the worst, um, and things are shifting because you can start to see the agencies are all lined up and you can start to see the money going in um, to that. And it just seems to me that I, th I think we're potentially missing some tricks. I might be wrong on that, but I'd, I'd be interested in your thoughts and comments um, on that uh, in relation to that sort of strategic approach. The last point that I wish to say is, is about domestic abuse and the refuge. We just don't have enough beds and that was highlighted in the, the County Council's recent report that came out and their strategic document. We're desperately short of that help uh, that is also needed uh, around that and that's coercive men uh, as well. So it's not just about being beaten up but coercive men of yeah, are doing things to phones and everything else and not letting people out. Oh, Councillor Poole. Chairman, thank you. Um, perhaps I can answer two of those. Firstly, your, your comments on the, um, the Reds. You can take it from me that I'll go back and work with the officers and we'll try to address that situation for you for the next report. Um, as you know that... Uh, I, I send them through to you, um, so you do get the figures, so you're not kept out, out of the loop. Secondly, um, working with partners, a part of the review showed uh, why I asked for a review of the Community Safety Partnership, that we, when I first started this 10 years ago, we used to have 22 members, and during COVID, it went down to eight or nine, and why didn't those partners turn up to the, to the uh, partnership. That's being addressed by the officers as we speak. So hopefully tomorrow we'll see an increase in um, members. Um, we're working with uh, officers to approach public health, CCG, and all those people that you know, uh, Councillor Rudas, as well as I do, to attend uh, our CSP board meeting. Yes, and um, if I may, Chair. Um, in terms of what is happening proactively, you're absolutely right, Councillor. Um, it is very difficult to, to measure. Um, there's no consistent approach that I'm aware of. And uh, the reality is that the majority of people's fear of crime is linked to the last bit, the people that are committing crime. But most of the work that we try to do is actually that proactive education and trying to avoid it. You know, typically... Um, most people won't commit crimes. They might get involved in low-level antisocial behaviour, etc. But we've got a scaled group, starting off with ASB right up to serious organised crime. Um, the ASB group has got hundreds of names on it, of people that have been involved, etc., that have been dealt with through all the agencies working together, Warwickshire County Council, Rugby Borough Council, the police, social services, etc., and the majority of them uh, stop it. The, the actually, it's only a small percentage that go on to that to, to the, be those serious uh, criminals. So I, I see that as a success. Uh, but you're absolutely right in terms of you know hard data. Can we do that? And that is extremely difficult. But I have to say that actually the majority, I think, the majority of the things that actually keep the community safe 
is those positive things, which is why we support them so much where we can. We've had wardens involved in, in individuals, getting them involved in things like boxing and this sort of thing, which has changed them completely, and, and so on. And those are the ones that actually really we ought to be supporting and, and providing data on. You're absolutely right. But it's more difficult. It's easier to actually report on crime that's reported. Um, and that's, that's the main issue. And in terms of the, the work with councillors and the campaign, fully agree. You know, that's ultimately what we want to happen. Um, as a regulator, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Inspector Bunyard Spears will agree with me, we don't actually want to do enforcement. It's not something that uh, we go out of our way to do. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and most of the time it doesn't actually change the way that people behave. So it's not something that we uh, you know, rely on. Most of the time it's education, interaction, and working with community members, of which councillors are key members because you understand the communities far better than, than officers do. Well, thanks for that. Uh, we're going to move on shortly, but first we've got Councillor Dr Mark Williams. Th thank you, Chair. Um, quick question. The, vast ma the reality is the vast majority of people are um, blighted with what is called low-level or antisocial behaviour. Where do you see... I've seen talk about visible presence on the street. Where do you see the future of the community safety wardens? Is that something you're 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 committed to? And what's the long term, sort of medium long term view on that particular service? Sorry, it's Councillor Paul. Got your red light on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, um, Councillor Williams. Um, the long term use of our community wardens. I wouldn't be here. I won't sit here if, if the council decide to disband them. Without them during COVID, uh, this place would have gone to rack and ruin. Um, obviously, the police are out there every day. Our wardens are out there every day dealing with antisocial behaviour. And I see them as a major part of our integral team uh, for this borough, dealing with antisocial behaviours, fires, everything. You name it, if call goes in, those people go out. Um, it wasn't so long back People try to get rid of um, community safety wardens, uh, obviously, because of the cost. But we fought through it, and they are, like I said, and I'll reiterate, a major, major part of this integral uh, community ser service and working with um, ca um, Police Inspector Sally Bunny Spires and her team, we wouldn't survive. Thank you. Just record, um, yeah, absolutely in total agreement, and that's very, very uh, comforting to hear, hear that view. Thank you. If, if I may, Chair, thank you. Um, yes, the, the community safety wardens are uh, eyes and ears, and the, one of the key interactions that we have with the community. Um, we want that to be a positive experience. There will always be people that aren't happy because obviously the wardens do have to occasionally take enforcement action, but typically we serve handful of notices a year it's we don't hand them out on a regular basis it's not like some authorities where they issue you know 100 a day the vast majority of their work is to actually try and change that behavior and do that educational part and as uh, councillor paul has pointed out um, what don't they do you know whatever we throw at them they do so they do the the dog warden service they do car parking enforcement they do antisocial behavior um, they do general patrols of our assets to make sure that they're safe as well to support the police. Um, so they and they deal with things like fly tipping, etc., which I'm sure will come up at, at some point. They're the ones out working again with the police and the community to try and find these people and do them. So um, I'm I'm definitely with Councillor Paul. I'm not sure what we would be able to do without them, and I'm not sure what the community would think if if we lost them. Well, we've got one more question from Council Lisa Parker. Yeah, I just want to comment and add my th support to that before I come to my last uh, question. There is no doubt that we should not be putting our community safety wardens as a way of uh, supplementing the police that we already pay. Our council taxpayers pay considerably for, and thanks to the Police and Crime Commissioner, we'll be paying a lot more for their policing uh, in 22-23. But with that proviso and that criticism, it is no criticism of our community safety wardens who 
are there to protect our communities and the assets that we have that we need to protect within the borough. But I just want to make one question about the report. I think it would be really useful for officers to see, um, for members to see total number of crime and detection rates, please. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable for us to ask our police how many of the crimes that they have recorded, not incidents, crimes, result in a detection or a follow-up of some sort. Um, we certainly pay enough for it. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks for that. Um, David, did you want to add anything to that? Not, not specifically. I'm sure that uh, Sally and I can work together on providing those statistics and uh, a comparison with national figures as well, so you've got um, an idea of exactly what it is, and we can, we can put that together and circulate that. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. C clearly, there's been a few issues raised there, and um, you know, we're going to get regularly fed back into this scrutiny committee, how things are progressing over a period of time. Um, and I've got to thank very much um, Inspector Sally Bunyard Spears for coming along. And I know she's got to go out there and um, arrest all those criminals and clamp them in irons, but um, <laughs> thank you very much for coming. And if you w want to leave now, you're most welcome to do so. <laughs> We all okay? Of course, Chair, if any members do have any specific questions that they can think of after this, um, we can certainly feed, uh, Sally and I can look at them and, and try and feed back any responses, or we can feed it into the, the CSP board uh, so that uh, that can be considered. It's I'm just thinking about the work program and where you go. So if I wanted to go and see what your work program was and what you were doing, is that on the website or somewhere? Not not specifically at the moment. In fact, in fact, as part of the review, these are the sort of things that we're looking at. We're trying to get um, more performance type figures and action plans actually published. Some of them, as you can imagine, will have to be confidential but the plan is to get as much of that information out to councillors to keep you properly informed as possible. Uh, I don't think we've set a specific time scale at the moment. I think the strategy now covers a four year period and we are looking at drawing up a new uh, safety strategy first and getting that published. That will then come along with um, an action plan so we're drafting that strategy at the moment. So that, that should be with councillors to approve the consultation, et cetera, in the next few months. If that helps, councillor. Okay. okay. I would, <laughs> I think the key part is that we're doing a fundamental change in the way that we're operating and we want to, to make sure that's right. And as we pointed out before, we want it to be really community-led. We want the community to, to tell us what makes them feel safe and so that we can properly prioritise those. So that will always involve extra time to make sure that we, we do those consultations. Right, after that false start. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. Right, we're going to move on now to item number five. Uh, Chairman, just before um, perhaps I can help Councillor Parker with some figures, at the last police and crime panel, um, the Chief uh, Constable and the Police and Crime Commissioner reported 283,000 domestic burglaries in England and Wales last year. That's domestic burglaries, that's not burglary sheds or whatever, domestic burglaries. 14,000 uh, were investigated, uh, which resulted in a conviction of some description. 243,000 were written off. So I hope that helps you, Councillor Parker. <laughs> I don't think you want my reaction to that <laughs> no. on the public record, do you? Um, shameful. Absolutely shameful. Everyone concerned should hang their heads. 
And if I knew if I had my way, I'd do, be do, doing more than hanging their heads. Let's so, no, move on with item number five on the agenda. And um, again, we've got um, Councillor Paul to work us through this one. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can update you uh, on updates before the 14th of March this year. Uh, two very difficult years due to the pandemic where the teams had to divert resources to other tasks. I want to thank them for all the hard work during the pandemic. I think they, uh, they, they worked the socks off, uh, the teams that do our bins and the street cleaners that were out there and our wardens and our volunteers that went out to the clinics um, doing various tasks uh, at the surgeries uh, and all those people down at Lockhouse and everything, and um, I congratulate them. Uh, work included spe uh, specialist track and trace, visiting and advertising businesses, chairing specialist group uh, to support business in the town centre, door-to-door -door vaccination and testing campaigns, patrolling our public spaces, providing uh, COVID marshal services, limited enforcement only when required, dealing with increased numbers of nuisance complaints as more people are at home, providing additional support for bereaved families and managing to the uh, corporate safety of all our staff, councillors and visitors. We have continued to provide a community-based services, e.g. Uh, e our community wardens still in the community, evenings and at weekends, and have maintained as many services as we possibly could. For example, we are one of only a few councils that continue our pest control services. Following a restructure of our senior management team, now the leadership team, the service was restructured into four main areas. Environment, environmental health and community safety, licensing and parking, bereavement services, and corporate safety and resilience. I will now give a brief outline of what each of the uh, have been doing over the last year. Environmental health and community safety run by Henry Biddington. The team functions including food safety, workplace health and safety, infectious disease control, environmental protection, including air quality and contaminated land, nuisance, waste enforcement, pest control, drainage and public and private water supplies, private and community safety, including community wardens. Due to their public health training, they have been playing a major role in managing the pandemic, including track and trace, advice to business, outbreak management, community assurance, and a li limited number of case enforcement. Routine food inspections and health and safety was reduced in accordance with national regulatory guidance but now we are seeing a starting up focus to these services again. Nuisance work increased due to more people being at home, much of this being dealt with quickly by a visit from our community wardens. Fly tipping initially dropped due to the lockdown, but is now increasing again. So patrols are increasing and we are out using our cameras to try and catch offenders. Planning applications increased, putting pressure on our proactive work advice, advising on issues such as contaminated land, air quality and nuisance. Air quality during lockdown improved due to the lower traffic, but is now increasing. So work is being carried out in preparation of the new Environment Act to try and reduce pollution to safe levels, including a new air quality action plan, which is being produced. Private housing work concentrated on houses in multiple occupation where the COVID-19 risk was higher and on complaints from tenants and landlords about safety issues. HMO routine work is now starting again and the COVID-19 area work identified a need for action, area action to help resolve community issues in deprived areas. As a result, we are piloting a Ben Ward area action plan which I went out with uh, a team from Ben Ward uh, three weeks ago, 
looking at issues as HMOs, parking, drug dealing, litter, dog fouling, street cleaning, speeding and fly tipping. If, if successful, it is planned to try it again on other woods, uh, which we did last a week last Friday on New Bilton with Councillor Ish Mystery. Licensing and parking. The licensing team have been very busy updating their systems. The gambling policy and alcohol policies have been reviewed in accordance with government legislation. The taxi policy approved before COVID. But COVID is now starting to improve and the emissions from taxis. Taxi fares have been reviewed and approved and the meters in the taxis have been altered. A lot of work has been going on recently to look at the complex system of fees, which are cost recovery, e.g. taxi fees. Uh, and this has been supported by finance, who we want to thank. We are working now on a revised street trading policy to improve events in the town centre. Parking has been less successful. Income has been reduced by about 40%. It has been badly hit by the changing patterns in working and shopping in the town centre. The team are now working with the council's team spatial strategy and corporate property strategy to write a, a strategy which will look at new markets and competition from providers cashless payments, extending parking fees to other car parks and using charging to help council meet its congestion. Air quality and climate change objectives are also in the pipeline. Bereavement services. They have been concentrating on continue to provide their services while there have been restrictions on what they can do and how they can do it. With increasing demand and while keeping the staff safe Existing services such as live streaming have been very important during the pandemic and prices were dropped to help and support the families. As a part of our new corporate strategy, the service is looking at extending its services into the commercial sector to provide better services for families while also providing revenue support key council services. I'm likely able, be likely able to report uh, and more on this next year. Corporate safety and resilience. They are responsible for our council's compliance with health and safety and emerging planning responsibilities. Again, they have been very, very busy ensuring staff, councillors and visitors have been given the most effective protection during the pandemic. However, they have also been updating our emergency planning policy they have started to work on improving the council's business con uh, continuity plans and organising training and exercise to, to test how our systems work. To improve compliance with health and safety legislation, new software system known as SHE is being introduced and which will allow easier management by service managers, better accident investigation and improved dashboard for senior managers. This has been uh, supported uh, with a combined action plan and I want to thank all our audit team for the help. So what are my priorities for the coming year? Well, car parking, community safety partnership and the expanding services in bereavement services. That's the end of my report, Chairman. Thank you very much for that uh, report, um, Councillor Eric Paul. That's an uh, excellent report. And my, I extend my thanks to all those workers who have been out there on the front line risking life and limb through the pandemic. Excellent stuff. They all deserve a gold star. <laughs> now, have we got any questions for Derek? Councillor Lisa Parker. Sorry, guys, it's me again. I've got three questions. The first is, where will I find the number of cremations carried out at Rainsbrook in 2020 and 2021? Have we got those latest figures, please? Not, not to hand, Chair. Okay. Uh, no, Chair. They are available actually on our um, website under the uh, joint committee, but I can get okay. them to you individually as well because we okay. report on those uh, through that committee. But um, yes, they went up to about 1,200. The previous year was about 1,000. Okay, thank you for that. The second is with the re. Uh, tasking of staff that have been on COVID duty for the long for a long period um, we're learning to live with COVID we have to learn to live with COVID there is no alternative 
So how, what plans do you have to make sure that we now refocus our efforts on the other things that matter within the borough, not just containing a virus that now has a very, very, thankfully, um, low fatality rate? Uh, the reality is that COVID, has, as you say, has not gone away. It still has the potential to come back in different variants, which could mean that we have to look at the way we operate differently again. However, uh, the whole council is moving to operating, in effect, as normal, if that's the right word anymore. Um, from April, uh, we're following the government guidelines. Officers are coming back in. Officers will be going out doing more work in the community. Having said that, um, most of the frontline officers have been doing that during the pandemic anyway, um, with the right risk assessments, the right PPE, etc. And that is going to be the fact of life from now on. We're going to have to make sure that we do those risk assessments, which is something that we have been working on uh, recently to get those right um, and make sure that the biggest risk now is business continuity. Because as people do get it, they do still become ill and it is highly infectious and people take time off. So the biggest risk is that a whole team, for example, would be affected. So a lot of the work that we're doing is is trying to reduce that risk. Thank you, Chair. And my final question is, we raised a few eyebrows in rugby when we allowed our taxi forum to successfully uh, bid for higher fares, which we were happy, well, I <laughs> don't know whether the word happy is right, but we were happy to, um, to acquiesce to. Um, but presumably with rising petrol prices and diesel prices, do you anticipate that the taxi uh, lobby will be coming knocking on your door for even ever more higher fares for their taxes? Uh, I, th I will keep an open mind on that, councillor. Um, I think the honest answer is that uh, we, we planned to do this on an annual basis. Things like COVID stopped that happening. Um, it went several years, principally led by the taxi trade, who didn't want us to put up prices. Um, and now we've got a mix of views and of course we reviewed it uh, just before the fuel crisis. Uh, we've not, to my knowledge, had anyone come forward yet saying we need more money. We did put the, the fares up quite significantly. Um, we will be continuing to do those reviews so there should be another one coming this year. So we'll see whether the prices are still high and that is a, an influential factor this time round. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Have so, we got no more questions? Then, in that case, then we could probably ask uh, De Councillor Derek Poole that he can now be released from captivity. <laughs> okay, and in that case, then we'll thank you, Councillor Poole. Thank you for your report. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to move on to um, item number six on our agenda. The over no, this is the um, Scusary Work Programme, uh, which is, um, you know, gathering pace now. Um, we've had some volunteers for the um, Member Officer Working Group, and so far we've got councillors um, Mrs Garcia, uh, councillor Rabin, Mrs Maudis, and, and Mrs O'Rourke. So we need uh, a little bit more of a mix across the uh, groups if we possibly can. We want some further nominations for that. So um, please get your thinking caps on and get some volunteers forward. Um, we also need volunteers for the access to emergency health provision. And I've already got one person that's uh, keen on joining that group, uh, which will be uh, Deepa Roberts. Um, do you want to speak on that one, Councillor? Well, uh, it was one of the things I asked for us to look at, so uh, I would like to put my name forward. I was, the question I was going to ask, because I've seen the email asking for volunteers for the member and officer working group, but not for this group at all, So, and the year's getting on a bit. I was hoping to get this one put to bed by September, but it's unlikely to happen now. Okay, well, we'll that will obviously you know, put your name forward. Uh, presumably, you already have put your name forward. I'm putting my name forward. Yeah, put it, put it forward today. Yeah, and then we can get things moving. Yeah, is that okay? Um, now then, we've got um, the Chief Officer. 
uh, regulation and safety will provide a verbal update on this topic when we get round to that. Do you want to uh, yes. enlighten us? Town Centre Chair. Uh, yes, um, during one of our council meetings, there was a proposal put forward um, by Councillor Neil Sanderson and Councillor Jerry Roodhouse that we look at some aspects of town centre safety and that that uh, group should be um, monitored and provided in support by this scrutiny committee. Um, what's happening at the moment is that obviously the town centre spatial strategy has resulted in a review of a lot of issues that are going on in the town centre and cabinet we understand are proposing to look at a comprehensive number of working parties associated with the town centre uh, principally at the moment to look at those short-term issues that need addressing quickly but I'm sure that will develop into a much more developed program. And after discussion with uh, Councillor Sanderson and, and Ruth House, um, it's been agreed that that safety will form part of one of those groups. There is, it, at the moment, it's a proposal, but the proposal of, of Cabinet is that they will have a town centre group that will look at a, a, a wide range of issues. Um, and I'm sure there will be a lot of interest from members of this group in either contributing to that or scrutinising the decisions made over it. But it's, it's a comprehensive one and I thank Councillors Sanderson and Broodhouse for actually uh, putting that proposal forward, which I think will now form part of a much bigger project. Okay, thank you very much for that. Has anybody got any further comments on the uh, scrutiny work programme? I know that we've got the portfolio holder for operations and traded services uh, was unable to ten, attend this meeting and that's been rescheduled for the meeting of the 3rd of October. So that's some light years away now. So, um, Councillor Mahoney, you still want to... Yeah, I just wanted to go point? back to uh, what, what um, um, has just been said about this group looking at the town centre. Um, I didn't quite understand what you was leading to you know it has has there been uh what we call a remit for this group being set up and and what part do you see us playing or is it all you asking for this committee to oversee what the work of this group um thank you chair i, I think the honest answer is that this hasn't been um, firmed up in in any way it's been discussion with the cabinet members about how they want to support the work that's going on in the, the town center um, and I think, certainly from their discussions, um, they're keen for involvement from people like yourself because obviously you contribute significantly to the, uh, the knowledge of what's going on in the town centre. So it's a case of keeping an eye on what, what's going on and making sure that it, it uh, meets um, your objectives. Yeah, I'm going to take it this is going to be an officer-led group rather than a, a, a member-led group. No, as I understand it, it's going to be a, a member-led group, uh, I believe a working party. Well, the, uh, then I, I would like to make a suggestion to the chair, if you don't mind, that we are heavily involved in the scoping of this and what the remit of that group is so we can keep control of it. Because from my experience, when you, like you said, said it could be wide ranging, some of these groups go off into places that none of us have envisaged them doing to and get bogged down into minute details without actually producing anything. So I'll, I'll be looking to the chair and, and then the vice chair to take control of that process to make sure that it is formulated in, a, in the, the correct way and their remit is clear to everybody as to what they're, they're supposed to be hoping to achieve and what time scale. Thank you. Well, well, certainly, Councillor Moroney, you've got that down on record now, and the officers will take that away, and we'll, we'll make sure that uh, those who want to represent, be represented on that committee will have a, have a, a part to play in it. Is that okay. Uh, have we got any other items to, we want to raise on the, um, the work programme, or will, are we about there on that one? We're all okay? No more questions on that? Okay. Um, Right, so we're just asked to um, note the, the progress on the task reviews, and I think we're all happy with that, and uh, we agree that the work programme is pretty much on stream there. So, okay, that brings the um, 
the meeting to a close. I'll just ask the officers to cease, cease the live streaming for us. And uh, that'll be it for...